Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is up? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook, got you shook. Not Dead Yet, season premiere. Tonight, 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC. And stream on Hulu. Hey, everybody. So this show, uh, Fear Street Pitch, is going to be kind of an exclusive to Patreon, but we wanted to put the first episode out on the main feed as well, just so you guys can kind of get a vibe for it. And if you'd like to hear this every month or so, uh, feel free to swing on by to patreon.com backslash HMN podcast so that you can hear more episodes like this. And with that, so we are going to be starting with the first book in the Fear Street series. Now, real quick to establish this, uh, I know that I've read one Fear Street book ever. <laughs> uh, Scott and Brian, do you have any history reading these books? No. no. When you were okay. when you were collecting books like this and the R.L. Stein books, I read Goosebumps and when I got a little bit older, but for the most part, I did this, what this episode was. I would look at a cover and I would make my own story with my imagination because that's what people with no friends do. And <laughs> now I'm doing it here. All right. So the first book in this series, not off to a good start. There, I've seen enough Fear Street covers to know that some of them are a little bit more detailed than this. <laughs> but the, the first cover, it's called The New Girl, and it's it's a girl... Uh, dressed in a red sweater and a skirt walking through a vo- very foggy looks like empty town two mansions and it says he had to learn her secret or die trying so uh who wants to be the first person to do their their movie pitch on what their film version of the new girl would be without ever reading the book um i would like to take a stab at this because i want to jump on this grenade uh i take responsibility for this uh bonus series failing or not because i think i pushed you guys into it <laughs> well you pitched it and i thought it was brilliant so I also, well, it I mean, might I not think, be yeah that didn't even go to a vote it was just unanimous so <laughs> we're all to blame well okay good 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 so um i'm gonna say d- okay do do uh, do you want the twist or do you want the pitch? The whole the, thing. Tell us the whole Google. thing. Tell us. I mean, obviously, you know, imagine that you're doing a pitch where you can't tell us the full 90 minute story in 90 minutes. But, you know. No, give us I'm saying pitch. do you. OK, so <clears throat> let's just say her name's Janie. All right. She looks okay. like a Janie. Janie is obviously the new girl in this town. And um she starts at school and the usual mean girl bullshit happens because she's the new girl. And then obviously two boys start to like her. One boy is athletic and one boy is the artistic one. Obviously the artistic one is the survivor boy because fuck jocks. Anyway, so she goes through the town, you know, getting acclimated and, you know, getting into clubs and, and her school work and things like that. And as she's going about her day, things start to break down. Like um, she's in the bathroom and somebody's there and then she hears a scream and she goes to the stall and there's nobody there. And then another time she goes to, let's say, you know, in the new house that she's living in, she goes and um, 
she wakes up and she thinks she hears someone downstairs and, and there's no one there. And there, it sounds like a window breaks, but the window is not broken. So all of this, all of these things, she thinks one, she thinks she's haunted, but it comes out that she's actually in a time loop a la Jacob's ladder because she was murdered and she's catching all of the um, actual murders that the serial killer that killed her did throughout his lifetime and all those different places were places where he killed someone oh i like it i like it uh it it feels like it's taking a little bit from what i was going to go for actually but that's fine um so my pitch based on the way that this is designed and the lighting and stuff that she was so, already a ghost that she was a yeah, yeah i was I gonna go with the, twist of the book i'm not sure i'm gonna read when after we all do our pitches i'm gonna read the wikipedia summary of the book right. <laughs> uh, but yeah so i'm gonna say that she's going to school and she's very quiet and people don't really notice her or acknowledge her but her next door neighbor is like obsessed with her and knowing who she is and why she's so quiet and then, yeah, like as the story progresses, um, he really like when he tries to talk to people about her, they're like, I don't know who you're talking about. And that's because only he can see her. He's she's oh, just this yeah. ghost that, that lives next door, which spoiler alert is also the plot line to a Goosebumps episode by R.L. Stein. <laughs> but, but I also feel like I might be right with what the book's about because he seems like kind of that guy who goes back to the well a lot. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Oh, so. man. There was a time when I read a bunch of wiki pages about the Fear Streets. Um, he goes back to the well. He is the ultimate go back to the well writer. <laughs> Love you, R.L. Stein, but you kind of hack yourself. That's I, I always make the joke that um, it, it was in one of the first screenplays I ever wrote. There was a joke that a character was trying to explain that Rob Sterling was a complete hack. And everyone was like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? And he's like, yo, you sit down and you watch all the Twilight Zone movie, or episodes and you tell me how many times it was Earth all along. He goes, and then you watch fucking Planet of the Apes. You know who the writer of that piece of shit was? Motherfucking Rob Sterling. That guy loved it to be Earth all along all the fucking time. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing also is that um, I started watching the original Twilight Zone series on uh, Netflix and the, it is the perfect fall asleep to kind of yeah. – TV show because it's the exact same thing all the time. Yeah. yeah. Now some of the like, and it's worth saying. I don't want to shit on that show too much because no, I no, I love but Twilight like, Zone. When it, it, it's one of those shows where the good episodes are so good they outweigh the kind of bad and forgettable ones. But there, you know, over five seasons, there was a fair amount of bad, forgettable episodes of the Twilight Zone. Absolutely. All of season four should just be forgotten. <laughs> um, that was the season. I have not where gotten were, that far. Season four is bad. Like season four, the studio was like, this show's a hit. Make it an hour long instead of 30 minutes. Ooh. And like none of those stories can withstand uh, a 50 minute treatment. And it shows. Um, all right, Brian, what's your what's your pitch? OK, so the movie starts off. Right. And it's the girl we see on the cover and she's talking, you know, she's talking to her boyfriend and she's saying about, you know, how excited she is and how happy they are. And she's getting dressed and she turns around and she says, do I look okay? And it cuts to a corpse. Um, and then new girl by suicide machine starts playing for the intro. And it's got a real nineties <laughs> vibe type intro animated. So then when the, when the intro ends, it is the news report of the murder and then zooms out to it being on a TV at some, you know, diner at this town, right? And there's this kid smoking cigarettes, washing dishes, kind of a loner. Um, so he's <clears throat> he's in high school, but he's 30, like horror movies. Yeah. And he meets this new girl that we see in the beginning. And he fall and he falls in love with her. You know, she she talks to him. Maybe she drops a pen and he picks it up or whatever. <laughs> but they 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 interact and they they start to, you know, fall. You know, he starts they to catch fall feelings. Her. And the then, kids say. yeah, they catch feelings. And like I said, he's a loner. He gets picked on. So so one day one of the jocks are like, you know, blah, 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 talking shit on to the girl and be like, you know, how do you feel that your girl's a hussy? And he's like, what the fuck you mean, bro? And he's like, yeah, well, she's hanging out with John tonight. And he's like, what? So then he goes and he walks and he creeps up in John's bushes to see. And she's sitting on John like like it looks like she's riding him. And then. 
when she pulls back, he's got his throat slit. So he starts freaking out. He ends up confronting her. It's almost like a Heather's thing where she is like, I'm only killing shitty people. So he ends up going with her one, you know, one time to, to a kill and he's outside nervously smoking a cigarette and he's just like, I can't fucking do this. So he kind of drifts away from her. She gets like, you know, more concerned about him on top of him. So finally he's like, I, I need to take this girl down. So he goes, she just killed about half the football team at, at one of the parties. <laughs> he goes to stop her. It gets to the point where you just think that he's going to, to, to stop her. She comes with a club, hits him. He wakes up. She's gone. There's cops lights around. He's passed out holding the knife. They arrest him. The cops are going through. He's trying to say no one even knows who he's talking about with this girl. And they're like, we found your footprint outside of the house of this guy. Here's a cigarette with your saliva on it. And this guy goes to jail for the murders of his classmates. And the new girl goes to her new town. Credits end. Okay. I so, like that a lot. <laughs> so Brian did the Brian did the best one. Uh, I think I would vote for that. The best uh, pitch. The best pitch. So let's see. Uh, so The New Girl is the first novel in R.L. Stein's Fear Street series. It was written in 1989 and was the earliest horror novel that Stein had written. Um, so this is pre Goosebumps, I, which I didn't know that. I always saw Fear I Street. That. I didn't know that either. Yeah. 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 All right. Corey, a high school student, falls in love with Anna, a new girl at his school. As he tries to learn more about her, he begins to doubt her existence. Most of her friend, most of his friends have never seen her on campus, and she's not listed in the school's files. When he calls her family's home, someone on the other end insists that Anna is dead. When Corey visits Anna's house on Fear Street, he is met by a man who again insists that she is dead. A few nights later, Anna calls him asking to meet her and implies that she is in danger and needs help. When he meets her, she says that she just wanted to see him and kisses him and convince him that he's that she is real. Uh, she, she tells Corey the man he met at her house is her brother, Brad, and that he is crazy and possibly dangerous. At school, Corey's friend Lisa asks him to the school dance. Soon after, she finds a dead cat in her locker with a warning note attached to its neck. She suspects that Anna left it being driven by jealousy over her friendship with Corey. At the dance, Lisa is pushed down a flight of stairs by Anna's brother, Brad. While attempting to pursue him, Corey and Lisa end up locked in the music room. Corey escapes and lets Lisa out, but Brad escapes. Coupled with Anna's begging Corey for help, he now understands that Brad is behind all of this trouble. Corey angrily travels to Anna's house to confront Brad soon after. When he gets there, he sees Anna and Brad fighting with each other, and it is revealed that Anna is actually Willa, Anna's sister. Willa killed Anna out of jealousy, following which she assumed Anna's identity. Willa had told Corey that Brad is insane and possibly her sister's murderer, but Corey now realizes that it's the other way around. Brad is always just trying to warn him away. Corey and Brad manage to subdue Anna and call the police, and in the end, it is applied that Corey has begun a relationship with Lisa. That's actually pretty fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, well, R.L. Stein hadn't completely dried himself out so he was yeah like, well feeling and good. the other thing that's important to remember is that the fear street books were definitely written for like a middle school and early high school yeah, age yeah, where goosebumps were definitely like elementary school aimed yeah so, so that that is a factor of these actually having people die versus goosebumps where everyone's okay at the end every yeah. single time except for um, the prick's little sister I got, <laughs> I got taken away by the cuckoo clock of doom. Uh, maybe hey, I'll go get her. Maybe. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that was the first episode of Fear Street Pitch. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I think it's a fine little mini series. Yeah, it was fun. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 